Hey, thanks for joining me. We're going to go over how to use Phaser IO, the JavaScript game engine. It's used for making lightweight, fast games that don't need complex languages like C++ and C Sharp. I'm going to go over how sprites work, how we use them, how to deal with user inputs. So when a user presses arrow up, we jump. When they press left, we go left, things like that. I'm going to go over collision. And I'm going to get right into it. To start, we're going to have to do a couple things. We're going to have to make the files for all the code. We're going to have to import some sprite sheets, one for the player and one for the ground we're going to be using. And we're going to have to configure our file. The first thing I would do is make a index.html file and add this code. You can go to my GitHub link, which I'll put below, and it will have the sprite sheets. It will have this code, and you can copy paste it so you don't have to spend time writing it. We're going to have to make a app.js file, and inside of it, we're going to have to put this configuration. Now, this is going to hold, this is what the game will be built on. We're going to have a height and width of the canvas. We're going to say it's an arcade game. We're going to set the gravity to a specific value. And we're going to throw in these three functions. Now, these three functions, they cover the most important part of the game. We have the preload function, which will deal with bringing in any assets to the game before the game is created. So we're going to bring in the pictures, we're going to bring in the player, the platform, things like that. Then we're going to have the create function. The create function is going to deal with creating. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to put the player and code in there so that when the game first uh, gets rendered, the player is going to be created. And then under that, we're going to have the update function. Now the update function is going to update and it's going to get ran every frame. So if you're running at 60 frames a second, this function will get ran 60 times a second. This will usually hold the code that deals with the user input. So when you're pressing the keys, what actions do you want to do? Or if you want to do a timer, you can put it in there. Things that need to get constantly updated and constantly checked for. So we finally got our schema of our application. And now we can start going into the actual code. We're going to have to deal first with the preload function and initializing the game. So first thing we should do is probably initialize the game. So we're going to make the game variable and we're going to say new phaser dot game. And inside of it, we're going to throw our configuration that we made above. Once we got that initialized, it's going to go and look inside this phaser script I imported. There's two ways you could do this. You could just have the actual phaser .js file in your file structure or you can just do it right here on the side in your index.html. It doesn't really matter. Once we do that, we can work with our playout function and we can start bringing in specific things that we need. We need a platform and we need a player. So I'm going to go and I'm going to use the load method and I'm going to tell it I want a sprite sheet and inside I'm going to have to say player. We want to get the player from the assets folder and the player is called player.png and inside that we're going to have to give it a couple parameters. We're going to say we want the frame width to be a number that I wrote down 32. I tested these numbers and this is what makes the most sense to me if you'd like to change it up you're welcome to it won't affect anything except for how well the character is running so we're going to do that this should be a capital now we dealt with the player and we need to add the code for the platform so we're going to go with this dot load image and inside we're going to do the same thing we're going to say platform and we're going to import it from the assets. From the assets folder. I'm just going to confirm platform.png, player.png, 
assets folder. All right, we're ready to go. So once we did that, we can actually make the variables that will hold all the settings for all these things. So we can make a player variable. We can make a platform variable. And we can make a keyboard variable. And the keyboard variable is going to deal with all the user inputs. The platform is going to hold all the settings for the platform. So we're going to say it's going to be concrete and static. We don't want it to move and we don't want anything moving through it. And the player is going to deal with moving him left and right, up and down. So the player and the keyboard are going to be interacting a lot. Now the first thing we have to do is give the platform some more settings and set it up. We told it that it's going to be static, so now every initiation of the platform variable is going to be static. So we're going to create one. We're going to go platform dot create. And there's a couple things we need to put inside. I have these values hard coded. You can always set it up differently. We're going to do five sixty eight. And we're going to tell it to use the platform uh, image that we imported right up here, line 30. So this and this link together. Once we do that, we can start adding some other things. We can add a set scale. And we're going to say 2. Because if we go up here, we can see that our width is 800 and we're only asking it to be 568 pixels wide so we're going to have to make that a little bit more I can bring this down and make it look a lot cleaner and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to give it the refresh body method so that when it first goes in it refreshes itself and it goes to these settings. So that's it for the platform. Now let's go over a couple things we need to do for the player. Now we got the platform set up with its own configuration and we're going to go over the player configuration and make it so we can actually import a player. The first thing we need to do is make a player. So we're going to do this.physics.add sprite so we're going to add a sprite. We're going to tell it the size of the sprite. So these are hard-coded numbers. You can make the character bigger or smaller. It doesn't matter. Then once we do that, we're going to use player.setBounce. Now what that's going to do is, if the user is hitting the ground at 100 units, it's going to bring it up at 10. It's pretty simple. Now. Once we do that, we're going to have to make sure that the player cannot leave the canvas, that it cannot just fall off the screen and we won't ever see it again. So we're going to use the set collide world bounce method and set that to true. Now we got our player set up. Now we can start dealing with the animations. Here is an example of a couple animations on the Phaser IO website. I recommend going here for a lot of documentation and a lot of good resources to learn how Phaser works. You can see the code and you can go and interact with the actual animation. I'm going to keep going through the game and teach you through the game, but I recommend checking it out and I'll leave a link to it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create the animation for the player running left player running right and when he's in the middle. I'm going to pull up right here the sprite. So when we're running left we're going to want to use the first four pictures. When we're writing right we're going to want to use the last four and when we're not moving or we're jumping in the same place we're going to want to use the middle. I'm going to show how all this works. It's pretty basic. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call the create object or method. We're going to call it on left. We're going to add the frames. We're going to have to use something else inside of the anims object called generate frame numbers. 
and we're going to have to call all this on the player image or sprite sheet. We're going to have to do a couple other things. Give it a start position. So we're going to tell it to start with the first picture. And we're going to have to tell it end position to start to end with the third one. So we can go back to our picture. This is zero. This is one, two, and three. So go zero, one, two, three, and keep looping. And we're going to have to set with the repeat. We're going to have to tell it to repeat until it's not being called anymore. Because when you're running, and you let go, you should stop. But while you're holding, it should constantly repeat because you're still running. So once we do that, we can add the frame rate. I'm going to set it to 10. If you're going to have your character running really fast, you're going to want to put that up so his feet match up with the speed he's running at. If you don't want to, you can lower that. I'm going to have to repeat, and I'm going to have to tell it to repeat indefinitely. Once we do that, we are done with the left running animation. Now I'm going to copy paste this for the right one just to stay clear. You can write this, but there's no reason to change that to right. We're going to change this to five until eight. Keep the same frame rate and tell it to repeat nonstop. The last thing we need to do is set up a animation for the turning, aka staying in the same place. We're going to tell it to take this frame array, move that up. We're going to tell it to grab the player sprite. Once we tell it to grab the player split, we're going to tell it what frame to take. So frame four, because zero, one, two, three, four. So we need this guy in the middle. We move down here. And similar to before, we're going to have to add a frame rate. In this case, it's not that important because we're not really moving. We're just staying in the same place. And now we can start dealing with the collision. This is the fun part. So we're going to have to reference this again. We're going to have to get the physics dot add dot collider. We're going to have to reference the player and the platform. So if they ever get on the same positions, they will have to stop. If player and platform are both on 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 or something like that, and they're touching, stop both of their momentum. We want them to. We want to make sure that they don't go through each other. And platform is a static object, so it will always be at the same position. Whereas player will be running around and jumping and ducking through things and it will always be moving around. So we have to make sure that they ne when they do collide, that they don't just slide through each other. So uh, I figured out a couple things I did wrong. I used a lower capital G here on game. And also I was using the ES6 const when I should have used var on the preload, create, and on the update down here because they're at a different scope level than these three right here. So. Just make sure to do those changes, and now you should see a canvas, and now we'll figure out why the characters aren't being shown. So after a little bit of debugging, I figured out the mistakes I was making. I was trying to use ES6 syntax when I guess it doesn't work with that. So instead of using an arrow function like this, I had to change it back to the way I had it originally using function parentheses, the typical format. I removed all the lets and const and turned them back into vars. And I did make a typo on the left key is down. I said cursor instead of cursors. But now that I did that, we can actually go and interact with the game. So left, right, up, left and right at the same time, or sorry, up and left at the same time, up and right at the same time. We can go and change certain values. So let's say we change this to 
1.1. Now it's slowly going to jump higher and higher and higher. We could walk around like this. So that's it. We got our game done. Uh, the reason that this video has been so choppy is because it was originally intended to be a course on my Teachable account, but I decided to give part one to the YouTube channel and get some constructive criticism from people who are watching it and see where I can improve. I tend to pause a lot and do things like that. I will be doing part two on turning this game into an actual game with levels and a goal and enemies into a course. I will put the link where you guys can go and access it.